Okay, this is a quick video on how to use a cold roll laminator. Um, effectively, it's what it says. It's just uh, two sets of rubber rollers, solid. Um, it's cold, it's not heated rollers. There is a, an electric foot pedal you can use to control it and a set of electronic controls here, but I find it easier to just operate the wheel by hand. If your hands aren't big enough to do that, there is actually a small wheel that fits on the end of the roller and clamps on, so you can use that to wheel it backwards and forwards. I don't use the foot pedal because I find it easy to control by hand so that if something does go wrong, hopefully not, and if you watch the video and learn from this, then you shouldn't have any issues. Um, but if there is, you see, I can just stop and unwind it easily, whereas if you start to panic, you forget to take your foot off the thing, it all goes through and chews up. I learned that from practical experience myself. Okay, so I've got a job here. Normally, for example, this job, I print three of these in a row and laminate them all in one go. But I've cut it down to a single one, so I can show you how to cut the laminate down to a small enough size to fit the piece you want without making any waste for the laminate. Okay? So, ready to go. The workbench has already been cleaned. It's all been wiped down, tack cloths and damp cloths. It's all dry and it's ready to go, to get rid of as much dust and particles as I can. So, you'll notice that there's a, a largish sort of two or three, three inch gap there or thereabouts at the end. This empty space, this is where we're going to start the laminating job. And it's always a good idea to have this space at the beginning of the job, so that if you make some sort of mistake and you do crease up the laminate at the first part, it only happens on the waist. And by the time you get to the print, it smoothed itself out and everything's going to go okay. Okay? So, the first job is, is to cut the laminate down to the size that you need for the job you're going to laminate itself. So, all we do is, we pull the laminate all the way to the end. And then, what I need to do is, what I do now is, I just roll the laminate back about a half an inch from this end, make sure it's flat all the way across, and that gives me the length that I need for the job. So now I cut the laminate at this end as close to the edge of the vinyl as I can. So I just quickly do that, go all the way across, same thing on the other side. Pardon me if I've got the back to you. Okay. So once we've done that, we'll just roll the, the, the laminate away that we don't need. So now we've actually got the length minus this little half an inch at the end. So what I do now then is we need to trim it so that the width is correct. Now remember, you only need to trim or you only need to laminate the print itself. All the white space is just white space, unless it is part of your job, obviously. So, you can see now, I pull the laminate towards me so that the edge now is at the end of where the print is. So now I do the same thing, I just make sure it's just slightly covering the print. And again now, all I do is trim as close to this edge as I can. Now, I can take this large piece of excess, I'll just roll this up and put it out of the way and obviously this can be used on another job at a later date. So, now that that's cut, it's cut long enough to, to cover the whole print and it's cut wide enough to cover the whole print, but it's slightly shorter and narrower than the actual piece of vinyl we're covering. It's important to make sure that you do that because if the laminate is wider or longer than the vinyl, when you start to put it through the laminator, it's going to stick to the rollers and that can cause you all sorts of problems. So, we're ready to laminate now. So what we do now is, we pass the job through the centre of the rollers and then we position the laminate so that it's covering the whole of the print, but it's inside the edges of the actual vinyl itself. Okay? 
So once we're happy with that, we'll just put it in the middle. Yeah. So once we're happy with that, we're happy where its position is, we can now let the top roller down. Now, the top rollers, you'll feel it, the, the top rollers are under tension, uh, the, the screws, the height adjusters, they're under tension because they've got the weight of the roller on them because they've got it picked up and raised at the moment. But as you screw them down, as the top roller then rests on the job and on the bottom roller, all the tension goes off these screws and suddenly, there we go, they, they, they spin freely because there's no tension on them. It's the same on both sides. So what you do now is, is you screw them down until you can just start to feel the tension. And then what I do now is I just screw them down about a quarter, an eighth to a quarter of a turn, just to put pressure on this top roller through the job. So that's now ready to laminate. So what we do is now, we take this edge of the laminate and make sure I've got a cloth handy. This is a clean microfiber cloth. We take this edge of the laminate we peel off the backing paper and we expose about an inch or so of the laminate and then crease the paper back on itself. A good sharp crease, yeah? Now again, it doesn't matter if we touch this part of the laminate and get fingerprints on it because this is going to go onto this blank piece. So any fingerprints we get on the film are going to be separate from where the print job actually is. So I don't need to do anything at this moment now, except as we roll it in, we'll just make sure we tuck the paper underneath, and we roll it on, and turn, it's gone back through, right, so you can see it's gone through. But now the laminate is now attached to the vinyl, but on this clear space, as I say, so if we've got creases or anything, it's in this bit that we're not worried about. But the rest of it's now ready to go. So we'll just bring the job back in, but leaving it so that we can still see where the crease is, where we crease the paper. Now this next part, what happens, I've seen videos on YouTube. There's a fly or spider or something, come on. Just get my cloth and move this thing off. Okay, come on. Doesn't want to play. Here, I'm just go and move it away somewhere. Okay, sorry about that. So, as I say, what I've seen in other videos is that they they take the laminate, they bring it up to the job, and then they roll the laminate in front of them like this. Okay, and basically they roll it away from the laminator. Now the problem with that is, is when you get to this point, if you put, if you now put the film here, if you let go of it, it's going to unroll and spill all over the floor. Okay, now if you're on your own, this isn't an ideal thing. So what I've found, again from personal experience, is the best way to do it is you roll the laminate towards the laminator. So we'll take this end and we roll towards the laminator so that the paper is on the outside, okay? So we take that all the way up to the job. And now what this does is, if we bring it over the top of the roller and put it down, we can now let go of it. And you can see now it's not trying to roll out. It's actually rolling against itself. So it's holding itself in place. And this gives us two hands free to do whatever it is we need to do. Okay. So before, before I'm ready to go, I don't want the job when it comes through to drop onto the floor. So I've got a small sort of easel. Um, in this case, it's actually a stool and a piece of cut off uh, aluminium composite. And I just put this at the back so that when the job comes through, it goes onto the composite and it will just roll along. And by the time it gets to here, it won't have touched the floor, so we're just not picking up the dust and crap. So, before I start, I now take my clean microfiber and I just give the whole job a quick wipe over. You can use a tack cloth, obviously. Be careful not to apply too much pressure, otherwise you'll leave some of the, the grease that's in the cloth itself on the job and smear it. You know, so you know, just looking for any defects, any small parts. 
And a, and a little hint or a tip is if you've got a print job like this and you can see small spots um, where the print, let's say there was a small fleck of something on it when it went through the printer and you've just given it a wipe and you've lifted that speck away now you've got a white spot you can buy yourself a, a set of, a full set of um, coloured sharpie pens, permanent marker pens with a whole sort of spectrum of colours and wherever you've got those little dots you can just dot them and fill them in probably nobody would have seen it because it's such a small spot but you see it but if you do that all of a sudden the dot goes away and it's something that's not going to become an issue okay so we've now cleaned the job and we're ready to laminate so we pull the paper back over and we bring it over to this side of the laminator the top roll now as you feed in the job through you can see now I'm just rolling the paper up here and I normally roll the paper as I go along um, just to keep it all together but as long as it doesn't get in the way of the job it doesn't matter what's important is as you're rolling the job through you must keep where the, the paper separates from the laminate keep it on this side of the roller yeah don't get distracted and let it go over while you're not looking and then all of a sudden it traps and goes underneath it's not a problem sort of because you can roll it back and carry on but it creates a small sort of crease and you'll always get this line of air bubbles small air bubbles really fiddly to get rid of and if you're using a small needle or a pin to get them all out it takes you ages and ages and there are some really small ones you're just not going to get rid of so be careful and make sure you keep the backing paper where it separates from laminate on this side of the roller also try and keep the job going in one continuous roll if you can okay uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling it through and I will pull the paper but once I get to a certain point I'm just going to let go of the paper and just pull it from here manually instead of keeping hold of this end okay so I've got my panel to make sure it doesn't fall onto the floor and I'm ready to go so I start to feed it through try and keep it as a continuous feed you can see I'm rolling the paper up as I go along and keeping where it joins onto the laminate on this side okay so we're coming through now you can see it's jamming up slightly and it's picking up the job here which is not a problem because you can just push it down and carry on now I'm coming to the end where the, the end of the laminate is so what I do is, is I pull the paper off like this and you can see the laminate now has wrapped around the top of the roller and I put my finger on the very end of the laminate so that when we get to this point it doesn't fall onto the job and crease and keep that there all the way to there and then just let go making sure you don't trap your finger once that's done just feed it back in and run it all the way back through back onto the table and then another important thing is once you've done the job immediately pick up the top roller because if you forget that and then leave it for a week or two weeks or whenever the next time you're going to use it it'll create a flat spot on those two rollers and then it leaves this funny little crease line at intervals along the, your next job so that's the whole thing laminated uh, and ready to go onto your board or your uh, application surface thank you